Good morning, students. Today I will discuss about the first chapter of class 10 general science. Okay, and the chapter is chemical reactions and equations. Here in this chapter, we will discuss various topics. We will discuss what is chemical reaction, characteristics of chemical reaction, chemical equations. Okay, what is it? How to balance and chemical equation. Okay, types of different types of chemical equation, effects of oxidation reaction in our everyday life. Okay. Before going to the main topics, okay, let's have some introduction about it. Okay, if you closely observe your daily activities, you can see that we generally come across some processes, some changes, some changes in our daily activities. Okay, you generally come across through dissolution of sugar in water, melting of ice, evaporation of water. A soaring of milk, ripening of fruits, uh, rusting of iron, burning of coke, etc. etc. Okay, all these are actually changes. Okay, and some of them are said to be the physical changes, and some of them are said to be the chemical changes. Okay, so let's take some example melting of ice. Okay, this is the representation of this process melting of ice before the melting and after the melting of ice this is the two states in both the cases before melting and after melting in both the two cases the constituent particle of water is same it is represented by H2 in both the cases okay since in both the cases it is represented by H2 that means no new substance is formed Okay, and this state will show similar property to that of this state. Okay, you got it? Okay, similarly, if I consider melting of ice, oh sorry, uh, evaporation of water. Okay, in this case too, before the evaporation and after the evaporation in both the two states, the constituent particle is again same. It is again H2. Okay, in both the cases, the property is again same. Okay. Now, if I consider the dissolution of sugar in water, while you dissolve sugar molecule, sugar in water, actually this sugar molecule will break down to several tiny particles, and it, and it will occupy the interspaces between the water molecule. Okay, actually it does not form any bond with water molecule; it just occupies the spaces in between the water particle. Okay. That means again we can say that while while you dissolve sugar in water, it never forms any new chemical, any new substance. Okay. And the new state will have the similar property to that of the initial state. Okay. And these type of changes are called the physical changes. Okay. Now, chemical sense. For example, I will take this very simple example burning of coke. Coke is generally represented by carbon. Okay, to burn we need oxygen, so it will lead to the formation of carbon dioxide. Here you can see that carbon and oxygen combines with each other and forms CO2. That means they will give a new substance, they will combine to give a new substance, and this new substance will have different property to that of carbon and oxygen okay and these type of changes are called the chemical changes where new substances are formed and the form substance will have and the form substance will have different property to that of the initial state okay suppose rusting of iron here i have shown some iron article and you can here observe that a brown colored layer is formed over the iron nails. Na? Actually, these are the layers of oxide of iron. Okay. When we expose this iron article for a long time to atmosphere, to moist air, a layer of oxide will be formed. That means this sense is a chemical process. Okay, chemical change or chemical process. Because because this layer is a new substance it is a oxide oxide layer okay a oxide layer is formed on the surface of the iron article 
okay this type of changes are called the physical uh, sorry chemical changes okay for example soaring of milk okay during soaring of milk lactose turns to lactic acid that, okay that means new chemical substances form again okay while ripening of fruits uh i think many of you have heard about the ethylene gas which is used in the ripening process of bananas okay uh actually ethylene gas is used for the ripening of banana actually ethylene gas combines with oxygen and will lead to the formation of carbon dioxide and water this carbon dioxide helps in the process of ripening that means here in this case some chemical reactions are involved that means new substances are formed from ethylene to carbon dioxide and water so this is again a chemical sense okay similarly respiration whatever we eat the food material break down to ultimate state of glucose okay this glucose okay uh, the glucose particle during respiration oxidizes to give carbon dioxide and water it forms carbon dioxide and water and will release energy okay that means what we can say glucose converts to carbon dioxide and water that means new substances are formed okay so respiration is also a chemical sense okay okay i have mentioned two important points to remember from these two changes most of the physical changes are reversible that is we cannot get we can get back to the initial state okay for example for example this one this solid ice converts to the liquid water when i freeze this one it will again convert to ice okay so most of the physical changes are reversible okay but most of the chemical changes are not reversible okay although there are some reactions which are reversible but most of the chemical changes are not reversible okay so now what is chemical reaction all the chemical changes are actually accompanied by chemical reaction okay where there is a chemical change there must be a chemical reaction okay what happens during a chemical reaction actually during a chemical reaction during a chemical reaction the atoms rearranges themselves among themselves by breaking the chemical bonds between the atoms existing atoms of the reacting substances for example if i consider carbon plus oxygen uh, converts to carbon dioxide in this case what we can see carbon and oxygen combines with each other that that means uh, they will rearrange among themselves to form a new product co2 okay so what happens in a chemical reaction in a chemical reaction the atoms of one element actually do not change into the other they just combine or rearrange among themselves by breaking or by making some chemical bonds between them and will form a new substance okay in a chemical reaction there are two sides here you can say see that this is the left side of this chemical reaction and this is the right hand side okay uh i'll explain some other examples okay when a chemical reaction takes place it results in the formation of a new substance for example carbon plus oxygen to carbon dioxide okay the new substance form this new substance form is called a product okay and the substances which take part in this reaction is called a reactant that means the substances on the left hand side are called the reactants which take part in the chemical reaction and the new substances there may be some other products okay in this case only carbon dioxide is there and this one is called the product okay i think you got it 
these things are very simple okay some other reactions are given in our textbook activity 1.1 you can uh, study from your textbook there is there is one activity okay you are asked to burn a magnesium ribbon okay actually before burning the magnesium ribbon we must rub it very well do you know why actually when magnesium is exposed to atmosphere or moist air for long time a white layer of magnesium oxide is formed on its surface which hinders the burning of magnesium okay in some textbook uh, you will get the layer is of uh, magnesium carbonate 2 okay both of them are correct okay so before burning we must rub the magnesium ribbon very well before burning we must rub, rub the magnesium ribbon very well so that the layer of magnesium oxide or magnesium carbonate gets eradicated okay gets removed hmm? okay when you burn magnesium ribbon to burn we need oxygen it will lead to the formation of magnesium oxide okay in this case this side is called the reactant and this side is called the product okay when you burn magnesium ribbon it will burn with a dazzling white flame this is shown in this figure in this gift okay here you can see that this burn the magnesium ribbon burns with dazzling white flame na? okay after burning the magnesium ribbon will convert to white powder okay you can see the picture from your textbook this white powder is actually of magnesium oxide okay you got it there may be one important question why magnesium ribbon should be rubbed very well should be cleaned very well before burning in air what will be the answer it should be rubbed very well before burning so that so to remove the oxide layer of magnesium or carbonate layer of magnesium okay because this layer will prevent further burning okay if we don't rub the magnesium ribbon it will take time to burn the magnesium ribbon okay so now activity 1.2 i think i'll discuss it in the next class okay so let's stop here today